Hi, everybody. Welcome to Trisha Standard Time, or Trishish, as we call it, like 1030-ish, 930-ish. That's the time. It's an ish thing. So, welcome. I'm glad you're here tonight because we have lots to talk about. We actually have good news tonight, really good news. How are you doing, Insightful One? I'm doing great, but I am wondering, are you charging these pregnant women that keep popping in your house? No, your no. I, I feel it's my <laughs> civic duty. You know, I mean, some people like, you know, drive senior citizens to the voting booth and, and others like plant community gardens. I help pregnant women that show up at my doorstep deliver babies, which is why I'm late every night. <laughs> a thing. You know, it's just a thing. So, but I do make them walk themselves home. I, I teach them not to be wimps. <laughs> Get up and go, for God's sakes. They've done this a million years and not had any, like, you know, any pampering. So, I don't like pregnant women just keep showing up, and that's why I'm late all the time. Okay, so uh, we finally, finally, finally have news from Richard Allen and the uh, the hearing coming up. Richard Allen is the suspect in the deaths of Abby and Libby in Delphi, Indiana. And you know how I've sat here and bitched and moaned for years about why cameras are not allowed in the courtroom. It's a public, you know, it's a it's a public place. It's a, a anyone in the public can go in there. Why can't we have cameras? Well, the good news is, let me find it here. Dun, 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 dun. I need a trumpeter here just with me every night to play that sound. That'd be good. Uh, Delphi murderers, judge allows cameras in courtroom for hearing this week. Now, it doesn't mean they're allowing cameras in the courtroom for the trial, but this is a very good step. And this comes from our good friends at Crime Online. And again, I will put this in the description as well. An Indiana judge will allow news cameras to record a hearing Thursday in the murder case against Richard Allen, who is charged with killing teenagers Abigail Williams and Libby German in Delphi in 2017. Allen's attorneys had asked Judge Fran Gull last month to allow cameras to record all future proceedings in case, in case, while prosecutors said they were concerned cameras would create a circus atmosphere with 15 second clips leaving an inaccurate impression of the justice system. May I stop for just a moment here? May I? I think everybody says yes. Well, let me read this to you again. Prosecutors said they were concerned cameras would create a circus atmosphere with 15 second clips, leaving an inaccurate impression. Okay, so the, uh, the answer, according to the prosecutors, is have no cameras, and then everybody can come out and just write whatever they want. Really? Okay, so let's say um, some jerk goes up there and uh, takes a 15-second clip and gives a completely wrong story about it in this case. Do you know how quickly everybody would be on that clip and uh, making sure that that clip did not start a conversation and, and discussions with wrong impression, okay? If somebody came out and, and put a clip out and totally misrepresented it, there would be so much backlash from people like me and all the other true crime people on YouTube, people on Web Sleuths. There would be so much backlash that that little 15 second tape, by the time we were done, everybody would know exactly what was wrong with it and why it was a misrepresentation. And here's what really happened. So their answer is not to have any cameras in the courtroom. So, you know, Mr. Mr. Dirtbag can go out after being in the courtroom and make up something before they have a chip, before we see transcripts or anything. I mean, come on. That's just the most ludicrous, ridiculous excuse I've ever heard. I don't understand it. What are they afraid of? I, I'll never get it. Anyway, let me, let me continue on. Let's see. Oh, I can't. God, I'm getting so old. I have to keep getting closer and closer. Uh, Gull restricted her ruling to Thursday's hearing, 
provided that means of recording will not distract the participants or impair the dignity of the proceedings. The judge also noted the hearing in a non-confidential proceeding. I, I agree with that. If it's a confidential proceeding, of course you don't have cameras. Anything that the public is allowed to go to, you should be allowed to have a camera. The recording is restricted to news media defined as newspaper, periodical, press association, radio station, television station, or wire service. That means no bloggers, people, you bloggers out there. Uh, Gull scheduled Thursday's hearing to discuss the upcoming hearing on October 31st, 2023, and other matters which have recently arisen and may include a discussion of a leak of evidence that sent some crime scene evidence into circulation in the social media community surrounding the case. The Indiana State Police announced an investigation into that leak last week before Gull set the hearing. Allen was arrested, and then they just go in to talk about uh, the, uh, the case, you know, what he was arrested for. It happened in 2017. So... Thoughts, my darling true crime angels? Give me your thoughts. What do you think? Yes, insightful one. Oh, now I was just clearing my throat. Okay. For you real. <laughs> For real. I, th I thought you were trying to get my attention here. No. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I just, I don't understand it. I, you know, I go back to Lori Vallow Daybell. Mm -hmm. That, that made it a circus. Remember, they made us wait till the end of the day, and then they released just the recording. And it would be like a, you know, six, four, six hour recording. And, you know, you had to, you had to take two or three days to go through it, but then you were way behind. It was such a, uh, a ridiculous way of doing things. But yeah, um, this is a good thing, people. This is a good thing. Yeah, and I remember a while back we discussed how Richard Allen wants cameras in the courtroom. Yeah, and I'm so glad that helps a lot, you know, towards getting it right. Live. They want it, yeah. you know, you're right, and that the fact that that his team uh, really wants cameras, that's good. That's very good. Uh, I remember the um, in the Daybell case, they were all worried that the cameras would focus. On, on Lori the whole time. You know, again, this is why if I could be king for a day, I could fix this problem. Okay. If you're worried about the cameras focusing on your client, here's, here's something the judge could do. Okay. Cameras, you can't focus on the client. You can't focus on the jury. You can focus on the witness and the prosecution and the defense when they are questioning the witness. That's it. Problem solved. See, I'm a genius. It, it just, you know, it's such an easy solution that when I can come up with an idea on how to fix it, it's a miracle. Yeah. Absolute miracle. There was a trial that wasn't aired um, years ago. And I'm actually, I think it was a good idea. They didn't air it. Mm -hmm. I think just because it was a circus without it being aired. What was it? And then the victims, the Lacey Peterson trial. Or Scott mm -hmm. Peterson trial. Scott Peterson, yeah. Yeah. Boy, that was a circus, I'll have to admit. That really it was, was so bad. And then just also the stuff they had to reveal in regards to Connor and Lacey. I don't know. It never bothered me. That one wasn't aired. You know, yeah. her parents were there and you just knew it was being you know, lost. I, you know. that. I, I under absolutely understand that. I don't know. That was a harsh, harsh, harsh one. Oh, Lacey Peterson oh. still to this day because Scott's appealing it. And, you know, he got his death sentence overturned. So now it's life in prison. And I wanted to watch it because I was so invested, you know, in that watching the news. I had HLN on every day from the day she went missing. Oh, every yeah. Every single day, you know. But mm -hmm. I understood in that case. It's just such a delicate situation. Yeah, it really is. That really was. But um, but in this one, like he says, I also think he wants an heir so he knows he he gets a fair trial. Everybody sees. I think he's yeah. worried you won't get one. Yeah, he's. Pro I think he's extremely paranoid. Yeah. And uh, good. Hey, if he wants them, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I think they should air this one. 
Because uh, absolutely, yeah. no, no question. Um, Candy Williams is asking about. Uh, I saw the update on your daughter-in-law's nephew Joaquin, and that he's home getting physical therapy and doing better. Yes, we are very fortunate, and thank you. So many of you donated to Joaquin's GoFundMe. He is my daughter-in-law's uh, nephew who was in a vehicle accident in Peru. And uh, it was real touch and go there for a while. And they don't have insurance. And so uh, anyway, thank you very, very much. And that is great news. So again, thanks everybody for being so kind. Okay, let's see. Glam Dolly's here. That's good. Candy Williams. Uh, Beth B. Hello, Beth B. Marilyn Landis. Woos. JDR. Mm -mm -mm. Zelda Zelda. Hello. Exactly, Marilyn Landis. No cameras on the jury. None. Yeah. That should never, ever happen. And, and I, you know, at the end of the trial, I think it's at the end, they release the names of the jurors. I don't think they should ever do that now. Not in this day and age. You know, not in this day and age. Now, if they want to come forward and talk to the media and give their name, that's up to them. Yeah. But not in this day and age. You shouldn't ever release uh you know, names. It's I think it's names and addresses, if I'm not mistaken. And back in back in the old days, you know, when we didn't have the internet and people didn't know 90% of the stuff that was going on, it's a different thing. But now you just you just never know what crazy out there is going to decide to do something about what they thought was an unfair trial and take it out yes. on the jurors. I mean, it's just common sense. But again, they won't let me make those decisions. So not yet, anyway. Maybe someday. Okay. I, you know, let me tell you real quickly. I went to a crime online today because they're the best at rounding up the latest in uh, true crime news updates. And, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Rose B, for becoming a member for 21 months. Thank you very, very much. That was very sweet. Thank you. Uh I just, so anyway, they're, they're really good. Uh, they, they cover a lot of cases that have already been solved, you know, and they're talking, talking about the trial and the trial updates and things. And I've, we've talked about this before, how you go there and you read the headlines and you just become so depressed that you want to eat your own weight in nachos and just pull a sheet over your head. And maybe that's just me, but I'm telling you, there is something going on in this world. I went on there today and I lost track of the headlines along the lines of, uh, let's see, uh, father, mother, boyfriend, girlfriend, stepfather, stepmother, uh, injured, beat up, tortured, killed, toddler. I mean, there were so many of them. I couldn't, in fact, I was going to put up like a, a little comprehensive comment in the thumbnail. And I thought, no, I can't even, I can't even say it. It is unbelievable. What is going on? And maybe it's just because now we're seeing it more because it's being reported more. It could be something along those lines, but it's a very damning statement on society. Let me tell you. So let me just go to crime online really quick and show you what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm so bummed. I saw an article on there today I was going to share with you, and then I forgot. Oh, what is it? Crap, I forgot. I'm oh. so mad now. <laughs> but I do remember there's an update with the dad that killed his two children. He mm -hmm. said they had serpent DNA. Oh, my God. Happened in Santa Barbara, what, last year or whatever? Right. Or Mexico. I think he went to Mexico. Oh, Jesus. I don't I have to look that part up. But there's no. an update, and the update is he was found incompetent to stand trial. Well, that doesn't surprise me, you know. Um, no surprise there at all. A lot of these cases, that's how it's going to end up, is they are not competent. Because, like you said, he thought they had serpent DNA, for God's sakes. Yeah, uh, he's, he was a QAnon person. He believed in that. Oh, my God. Well, there yes. you go. Don't, don't even get me started on those people, on that group. Yeah, he took him to Mexico and killed them. I'm looking, checking the, checking up right now. He was a California surfing school owner. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 
That's right. I figured you'd remember if I got more details. Yeah, you got to get me the the, the details. Yeah. There. Okay, let's see. Um, no Amber Alert issued for teen girl later found murdered in the woods. Uh, North Carolina dad fatally injures three week three week old baby. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, so depressing. The depressed mom stabs five year old daughter to death while dad is at work. Dad of murder taught found an alligator's mouth deemed unfit to stand trial. Uh, let's see. Grandmother charged in death of infant from prescription cough syrup overdose. Emaciated four-month-old girl found dead with swollen stomach and parents charged. And there's more. Wow. But you see what I mean? It's just on yeah. and on and on. And I'm wondering, is it getting worse and worse? Or is it just we're seeing more reports like all over the country and then when they're put together in one place, it just seems overwhelming. It's that we're seeing more reports. And even Cheryl said that the crime rate is actually lower. Right. That's than it true. has been in a long time. It's just now we hear from news everywhere and everybody reports on every little thing from their area. And we see it all, you know. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely right. And just, they go reported more now right. than they used to. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. Um I mean, you remember the uh, back in at least back when I was growing up, you didn't. You think, there was no such thing as domestic violence. You know, yeah. They would send the husband or send the wife away and tell everybody just to calm down. You know, and that's all they did. Yeah, um, and wives couldn't be raped by their husbands. Oh, that's right. They yeah, absolutely. And you could beat your children and discipline, and it was that was abuse. Wasn't yeah. abuse. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, we have evolved that way, which would increase, obviously, mm -hmm. the reports of these types of things. So, anyway, um, mm, 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 I'm just going down here. Uh, Illinois man charged with hate crime and stabbing death of six-year-old Muslim boy. I don't know if you heard about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was horrible. Um, and then a Florida woman charged with carjacking her mother. Well, there's a loving wow. mother and daughter relationship. Mm -hmm. so, uh, hold on one second. What is this one? Oh, sorry. Okay, I thought they were talking to somebody who got eaten by a bear, but that's not what it was. Hold on. Okay. Well, anyway, you get what I'm saying. It's very, very... Um, disheartening but again i do think it is a false narrative it's just because there's not more it's just we're reporting more and more and like our good friend Cheryl mccollum said crime is actually like way down so but with social media as it is and everything gets reported and then people people report on it and then it gets passed around it just feels like it's more dangerous out there than it really is so anyway, uh, we told you about JJ getting uh, his remains being released to the family. And tomorrow night, we go on at a special time, 930 Eastern. We go on an hour earlier because Joseph Scott Morgan will be here to talk about that and to uh, update us on all the things that Joseph Scott Morgan knows about. He's a death investigator. He has been working in uh, like a coroner's office since he was 18. And he's also a, uh, he's a professor. I don't have his uh, information in front of me, but I mean, like Jacksonville he's, State University in Alabama. Thank you very much. That's yes. what I meant to say. I mean, that's just one of his, his titles. He has so many and he is truly beloved by everybody. He'll be here tomorrow night. Remember, we're going an hour early at 930 Eastern. And we'll keep reminding you and reminding you and reminding you. Because if you're like me, you forget everything. Okay, so uh, Chris Owens, were the crime scene photos even actually released? Because I haven't ever seen them anywhere. Uh, Chris Owens, you're talking about the crime scene photos from uh, Abby and Libby's case. Yep. And it's the one, the ones I think, weren't these included in the, uh, what's it called? The memorandum that the defense filed? No, well... I don't they know what it's we talked about it last night that supposedly they, they were leaked to like certain social media people. A few of them have claimed they've seen them. 
they haven't released them publicly though. No. Oh, okay. I thought some of them were the ones that came with that um, filing that the defense did saying that, uh, oh, no, what are they called? Oh, miss. Yeah. Uh, are the one, the cult killed Abby and Libby. And there were pictures with that that have been released. There's but, a good article about who supposedly leaked them and everything. So ooh, well, where is I'll the, find it. Do, do. Now, uh, I believe Murder Sheet, the podcast, Murder yes. Sheet, has been talking about it. And they claim that uh, they didn't, uh, they did not get them, like, in any way, shape, or form illegally. And uh, they, they had them. They have them. I don't know if they're the only ones that have them, but send me that article and I'll read it, my dear, because it's just very, it's so, the whole thing is just so dang sketchy, you know? Uh, I hate chocolate. According to the specialist that we had on, uh, the, she said that the uh, F on the tree was not anything to do with, an, I want to say odontologist, but that's not it, is it? What's it? How it? What's it called again? She's um, in a heathen group. Odin. Um, there are people that believe in Odin, but she's not an Odinist. Okay. Um, she's Odin. A heathen. Yeah, and Odin is a figure, right? Yeah, a he's gong. a Norse god. Yeah. Anyway, she looked at that F, and she said, "No, that was." I guess there's an alphabet. Uh, a runic related. alphabet. Yeah, she said it's yes. not a rune. Yeah, she says not a rune. It's not one of their letters. Not at all. So now maybe somebody was trying to make it look like it, but apparently they didn't. And that was our expert that we had on a few weeks ago. We should have her back because, man, she was interesting. She was really, really good and gave us all kinds of information. It's good to see you. I hate chocolate. Oh, look, it's your boyfriend, Robert Plant, in your, as your avatar. Tell oh. Robert. Hi. Yes? You know, before the show that night, Ping showed us. There was, um, I'm, I'm not sure where he got it, but it was a picture of what the rune looked like, supposedly. Mm -hmm. She showed it to me and Lauren, and it didn't look anything like a rune at all, if it's accurate, nothing. And a, a rune just means like a letter of their alphabet. They call it Yeah, them and in Norse mythology, you know how um, Greek mythology has Zeus? Yes. Norse mythology has Odin. They're about the same level. Okay. That's all. So it'd be like if people still worship Zeus. That's all. Yeah. But people who worship Odin yeah. are white supremacists. It's really taken over. Well, no. Yeah. No. That's not accurate. Okay. The well, who are the white we, supremacists? Um, well, white supremacists, Lauren said, if somebody calls themselves Odinists, mm -hmm. there that means that group is white supremacists. Okay, so it's Odin. But, most, that are, that but are, there's many groups of people that worship Odin. God, that God aren't, okay. But the name Odinist is strictly synonymous with the white supremacy. That was the name I was trying to think of was Odinist. So, yeah. okay, so Odinists are white supremacists. Now, in this filing with the court about a month ago, um, the lawyers are saying it was Odinists that did this mm -hmm. to Abby and Libby. Can I just point out, you have a white supremacist group, supposedly. Why would they kill two white girls? That doesn't make sense. I, I don't get it. I, I just, and that's the other, that's the thing that the, uh, the, our specialist, she pointed that out. She's like, it just doesn't, it's just nothing about it. She felt said Odinists at all. So. Right. And being an, Odinist or believing in white supremacy is a completely different thing than being a pedophile or a child killer. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not related. Right. So you know. it, again, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, but the uh, defense lawyers claim they have, as they say, the receipts, you know, they have pictures of, they say prison guards wearing the, uh, the Odinist patch. Um, which is really shocking. You know what I found out the other day, and it's in the, those guards um, admitted to wearing the patches. Yeah, that, I, that's what they said. Yeah. But so how I did they get know, away with it? How would they get away with that? You know, I just would have to find out the rules for that specific area. I can't imagine. Um, oh, hey, I hate chocolate. Thank God I'm a heathen. 
Exactly. <laughs> we love you. I hate chocolate. We love you. Yeah. Um, I, I don't understand how a prison slash jail would ever allow that. Now, you, know? you know, I said my dad worked in the prison and which in California, jails and prisons are completely different things. Right. So totally. in the prison system, he couldn't get away with that. Mm -hmm. If it's a county jail, I don't know anything about that except here our sheriffs run it, not the state. So I don't know. Right. So again, you'd have to, I guess you would have to look at the uh, particular facility that um, Richard Allen was being held at. Maybe they just stuck him on there and nobody noticed for a while. You know, could be something as simple as that. Or but, maybe because it's a small town, nobody cared. I don't Nobody know. cared. Yeah, I, I read that same thing, too, and I was just shocked, absolutely shocked. But, you know, it's true. Well, the guards have admitted it, and that is something that the judge should look at. I I have no problem with that. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. And she hasn't, or he hasn't ruled on that yet. They want, um, they're, what they're trying to do, what the lawyers are trying to do Richard Allen's lawyers mm -hmm. is they're trying to get the search warrant thrown out and, and anything found with the search warrant. So, and you know what it's called. It's called a what hearing? A Frank's hearing. Frank's hearing. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea why. Probably something to do with a guy named Frank a hundred years ago. Yeah, exactly. But it anyway, something to do with somebody named Frank. <laughs> yeah, something, that one Frank dude in 1880. So, We'll just have to wait and see. I doubt she's going to throw out the subpoena when I'm um, the uh, search warrant and everything they found. I would be really shocked if if the judge did that. But if the judge does that, then they don't have anything. Richard Allen will just go bye bye, and just be let out. I would think. I, I can't. Like I said, I can't imagine the judge. Yeah, and the more I think about it and read about it, it just seems like, you know, the defense tactic. Well, yeah, because they made such a big deal about how Richard Allen could not have controlled these two girls by... We know that's not true, so... Please. Hell, an eight-year-old can control me by saying, I'll scream if you don't do this. I'll be, okay, okay. I mean, come on. You don't think a grown man <laughs> couldn't couldn't handle... <laughs> it's true. I couldn't handle two girls by saying, if you move, I will kill you. You know, I mean, and he had, yeah, yeah. anyway. And their big is. deal there, and the defense keeps reiterating that the police looked into these Odinists mm -hmm. and said, okay, there you go. They looked into them, which means they looked into it, decided it had nothing to do with the case, and moved on. Right. Right. You exactly. know, and you got to think after everything with the murder of those poor girls, the police would have been on it. Mm -hmm. If they really thought they'd found the killer, I think. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that was, they were desperately trying to find the killer, you know? And if that would have been anything, you're right. They have nothing to gain by keeping out uh, the evidence, you know? Right. They, it, and Graham Dolly sums it up. There she goes. Perfect. Agreed. Alan had a damn gun and terrorized them. Yeah. Yep, and if he you had a read, gun, remember that people. So yeah, he yep. had a gun. So think about it. I, he could absolutely control those two girls. No. And they, but that was a big part of the filing was, you know, they walked across the river and, you know, he, it was always, he was by himself. He did it on his own, on his own. And it's like, Oh, are you kidding me? Really? Yep. Hold on. Oh, Piper had a question. I always admire your green glassware behind you. Got uranium glass. Some of it is. Um, some of it is uranium, not too much. But uh, yeah, I've been collecting this for years and years and years and years. So um, I heard a big crash the other night, and I know there's something behind here that the cats pushed off, but I don't even want to look and see what it is because it'll make me cry. So, okay, anyway, let's see here. What else we got going on? Hi, Terry Queer. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. Da, 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 da. Dee, 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 dee. Sorry. I would sing other, like, top ten pop tunes, but I'd get zinged by YouTube. So I have to come up with my own song. 
which is de -de 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 -de. let's see here mm -mm -mm -mm. there was another question i saw in here and i can't find it huh. So anyway, the hearing's going to be on Thursday. Cameras will be in the courtroom. Now, I'm not quite sure. <sighs> That's scrappy. And I have to use my exorcist voice to get him to hush up. But I'm not going to do it because you guys will laugh and think I'm weird. And you know I'm not weird. Okay, anyway. I don't know if it was a live stream or not that they were allowing cameras in the courtroom. Did, did uh, anybody know for sure? What was it? Say it again. Well, did did it say that the the cameras in the courtroom were going to be live streamed? Oh, I'm not sure, but I did email you the article um, okay. about the crime scene photos, and in there, it tells what the hearing is about. Okay, let's let me read that real quick. Okay, and oh, here we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And this is from Court TV. Hold on, I gotta let the gotta let Ossie and uh, Scrappy Joe in. Come on, Ossie. Ossie, text Bud Nugget the first. Get in here. Come on, good boy. Oh, yes. He's saying hello. Hey, Shad Hunter. Oh, is Shad here? Hi, Shad. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. This isn't a, this is not an article. This is a, uh, you, it's a, a video. Did you have an article? Crap. Hold on. Oh, I got it. Never mind. There's a, there's a link to the article. Never mind. Got it. Okay. It, it up a, yeah, it showed up as a video and then there was a little link right below it. Okay. Okay, cool. So, a catastrophic leak of crime scene photos could impede the upcoming trial of a man accused of murdering two Indiana teens. Oh my God. Lilith, I literally just let her in. Public defenders for Richard Allen charged with the 2017 double murders of Abby Williams and uh, 13, she's 13, and best friend Liberty German, 14, have accused a white nationalist Odinist group of killing the girls in a ritualistic sacrifice. I'm not, I'm not hearing you, Lilith. Very few details of the crime scene have been made public, and many details have been kept under, wrap, under wraps, courtesy of a gag order put in place by the court, by court, by the court. God, I can't see the periods. One disturbing image of a tree with pagan symbols and blood on it was released in 136 page document filed by Allen's defense attorneys, Andrew Baldwin and Brad Rossi, who point to it as uh, additional support for their theory that the practice practitioners of Odinism were the actual killers. However, the latest photo leak was even more disturbing. Court TV guests Anna Kane and attorney Kevin Greenley of the Murder Sheet podcast received some received seven graphic crime scene photos that they believed had been included in the prosecution's discovery. I'm sorry, let me let her out or she'll just drive us nuts. Hold on. Come on. Yeah. No. Can't go out. Can't go out. No. Nope. 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 Sorry, guys. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Unlike the tree photo, which was not obviously to verify the graphic photos, 
were authentic. In other words, they actually did come from the crime scene, Greenlee said on his podcast. Knowing the seriousness of the offense, Kane and Greenlee reached out to Indiana State Police and Allen's defense team to alert both sides of the issue. After investigating, Kane and Greenlee told Court TV they were able to trace the leak back to an associate of uh, Andrew Baldwin, one of Richard Allen's defense attorneys, who was hoping to plug the leak. What? That doesn't make any sense. Judge Francis Gull scheduled a last minute hearing for October 19th at 2 p.m., which Court TV has applied to televise. Oh, so it could be streaming live. That's good. The, ju uh, the judge has not decided whether to allow cameras. She is going to allow cameras, so that's good. Uh, there's a strong chance the latest evidence leaks as allegations made by the prosecution that the defense is twisting facts for sensationalism. Okay, I, I have missed something here. Remember I told you since I had that uh, incident with my high blood pressure and since then it's like I sit and study a fact and it's not making sense. Yeah. I don't, okay, I'm going to read this par these two paragraphs again because okay. it doesn't make any sense to me. However, the latest photo leak was even more disturbing. Court TV guests Anna Kane and attorney Kevin Greenlee of the Murder Sheet podcast received seven graphic crime scene photos that they believed had been included in the prosecution's discovery. Unlike the tree photo, which was not obvious, which was not obvious to verify, the graphic photos were authentic. In other words, they actually did come from the crime scene. I, that, I can't, that doesn't make sense how that was worded. Greenlee said on his podcast, this is what Greenlee said on his podcast. Let me read that one more time. Unlike the tree photo, comma, which was not obvious to verify, comma, the graphic photos were authentic. In other words, they actually did come from the crime scene, Greenlee said on his podcast. Knowing the seriousness of the offense, Kane and Greenlee reached out to Indiana State Police and Allen's defense team to alert both sides of the issue. I, I think what they're saying, I think, is that they didn't, it was obviously a crime scene photo. Crime scene photos is what, I think that's what they're saying. Well, they're saying that the seven were verified to be crime scene photos, uh, right. photos, and one with the tree isn't verified to be one. Okay, thank you. After investigating, Kane and Greenlee told Court TV they were able to trace the leak back to an associate of Andrew Baldwin, one of Richard Allen's defense attorneys, who was hoping to plug the leak. Well, if it was traced back to him, he leaked it, but he was hoping to plug the leak. Do you see what I'm saying? Is this my, my brain with my blood pressure that ruined my brain cells again or no? I don't know. Okay, Read I mean, the last part again. After investigating, Kane and Greenlee, those are the people on the murder podcast, um, murder sheet podcast, sorry. Kane and Greenlee told Court TV they were able to trace the leak back to an associate of Andrew Baldwin, mm -hmm. one of Richard Allen's defense attorneys. Oh, I see. Got it. Got it. Okay, okay. I see. Who was who was hoping to plug the leak? Andrew Barton did. Uh, Andrew Baldwin did not leak them. An associate of his leaked them, and Andrew uh, Baldwin's Baldwin. Andrew Baldwin was trying to plug the leaks, but an associate of his leaked these photos, according to uh, the uh, Kane and Greenlee on the murder sheet. Is that what they're saying here? Yeah. I think so. Sounds After like investigating, it. Kane and Greenlee told the court TV they were able to trace the leak back to an associate of Andrew Baldwin, one of Richard Allen's defense attorneys who was hoping to plug that the leak. So that's it. So one of his associates, this guy was trying to plug the leaks and um, one of his associates actually leaked it. Okay. That yes. according, according to these, this podcast. Okay, Judge Francis Gull scheduled a last minute hearing for October 19th at 2 p.m. And we know that cameras will be allowed in the courtroom with that. So do, 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 do. anyway, so that's okay. So that makes sense. I see what they're saying now. Okay, so they're saying they got uh, the Murder Sheet podcast. They were able to trace back the document leak to this associate of one of Richard Allen's defense attorneys. Okay. 
why was he leaking it? Uh, somehow to obviously it was somehow to support their case that Odinus did this crime. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of. Okay. There's a lot smarter people in me that didn't have their brain explode a week ago that can probably even make more sense of this. So hold on. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Do, do, do. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, Katie Green, I don't know. I don't think this person killed themselves. This, the person that was supposed, and again, this is just according to the Murder Sheet podcast. The person that leaked the Delphi crime scene photos was an associate of one of Richard Allen's attorneys who was working to plug the leak. That's how the article reads. You know, wait, that's all we can go by. So, did now, did somebody kill themselves? Yes. Oh, who, who was it? I didn't know that. I'm God. trying to figure that out because I read that um, just a couple of days ago, but I didn't look into it like an idiot. So, I'm trying to figure that out. Um, can, oh, okay. Does, go ahead. Does, does somebody know who it was that killed themselves? Maybe we can find out. And Beth B says, but people screenshot the pictures already. I haven't seen the pictures of you. I mean, no. Yeah. There was a man who killed himself that was a possible suspect in the case. Right. But I'm trying to find the other but stuff. This is an associate of yeah. Richard Allen's attorney. Yeah. Not a suspect. There was somebody else. Uh, Beth B, if um, if you can find those photos, let me know, okay? Now, some photos were released in the document, in, in the filing by the attorneys. Some photos were, were released. Th this is different. These are more, apparently more graphic that were supposedly sent to the Murder Sheet podcast. So, I think we're getting this right, I hope. Yes, it's supposed mm -hmm. to be the actual crime scene photos. Right. Uh, okay, now, Mara, oh, sorry, uh, Marie Z. Winkler says, no, the photo, le the photo leaker offed himself. These pictures have bodies. Well, yeah, then the, if they're out there, then, um, yeah, those were not pictures. You're right. Beth B, those pictures um, that if they have bodies in them, that was not released in any uh, filing at all. So, yeah, if you, I mean, I'm not going to show them, but I just, uh, Beth B, if you could contact me and let me know where you saw them and I'll, I'll go take a look. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was just supposed to be um, stuff that they had and, you know, evidence that mm -hmm. they had to share with the defense is what they're from. Okay, can somebody tell me the person who unalived himself, because we can't say suicide on YouTube, um, who unalived himself that um, that was the photo leaker? That, that's what I need to know. Because according to the Court TV paragraph that I just read 300 times, so it could sink in my head, um, it was an associate of one of the defense attorneys who leaked yes. the paper. So I know it is so strange. It is so strange. Yeah, I thought it was a witness. You're, that, that's how I felt, Emily Narp, that it was a witness that had uh, taken his life. I know, but Piper, this is case is so bizarre. Luna Blue says the photo leaker killed himself. Okay, point point to me, anybody, point to me somewhere in mainstream media where this story is out so we can read it. Okay. So. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
My animals are heckling us. Uh. Let's see. Um, Glam Deli says there are less dramatic photos in the public domain. Libby's shoes in the creek. Okay. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Uh, Four Sons Mom says I think they've been removed. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. That would not surprise me at all. Okay. Okay, now everybody's telling me the photo leaker killed himself. And that I'm glad you're telling me, but I need to know where that information came from. Okay. Uh, Four Sons Mom says, it, are you saying that the uh, photo photo leaker suicide is on the uh, for uh, on the murder sheet podcast? Is that what you're saying? I hate morning says Fox News has a story 19 hours ago. Okay, can can anybody point me anywhere where I could find this? Like Fox News, where is it? Fox News National. And what does like what does the story talk about? Because we can do a Google search and find it. I know. Hold on. I'm. I did a Google search, so I'm reading an article right now, seeing if I can find it. But there's more than one. Okay. So how about just uh, killed himself and uh, killed? Hold on. Let me try something here. Yes, here it is. I found it. Okay. Can you read it? Yeah. Well, the, there's a long article, but it says Fox News Digital has also learned that a person associated with the photo leak has died by suicide as Fox 59 Indianapolis first reported. So Fox 59 Indianapolis supposedly first reported. Okay, it. There we go. That's what I needed. Okay. Now, and again, according to the court TV article, it was an associate of one of the, hold on, somebody's calling yeah, me. For, it says former associate. So there's a. Yeah. Oh, former associate. There yeah. you go. Okay. You're sitting on Fox 59. Hold on. Hello? Hi. Hi. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, we found the article that talks about the, um, uh, the former associate who leaked, um, who was a former associate of one of the, uh, yeah. So we found the article that talked about it. It was an article in Indi one of the Indianapolis uh, stations that first reported it. So it has been re reported in mainstream media, but thank you. You're welcome. I was trying to type it. Yeah. I, like, oh. uh, I know, I know. Hey, okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. That is good to know. Okay, so we got that out. Okay. Now, I think uh, the thing to do is listen to the Murder Sheet podcast uh, about the Delphi murders. I'll get that. I put the link up to it yesterday in the description. I'll put the link up again tonight. So, okay. Oh, no. So, I wonder if he's a former associate because he was the leaker. I don't know. So... Oh, uh, Candy Williams says, uh, let's see. It says a man was a close friend of Mr. Baldwin and previously worked as an employee at his law firm. The podcaster said that's the uh, murder, uh, murder sheet podcasters. Okay. Well, he'd certainly have access to evidence like that, you know. And uh, now why he would send them, why he would just send them to murder sheet podcast, I don't know. I, I just don't know. Uh, I read something last night that uh, Gia sent me that Gray Hughes was just really angry with the murder pod, uh, murder sheet podcast. I was going to message you about that. Yeah. yeah, he he goes into detail on why and what they've done that's inaccurate. Oh, he does? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so the one... Is it like I don't listen in, to them? Yeah. Is it in the uh, is it in his podcast or is it in a tweet or a post? 
Oh, in his shows, he's discussed it. Yeah. Okay. But you don't have anything like a specific show we can listen to or anything? No, I have to search for when him discussing it. Okay. Well, hold yeah. on. I'm going to grab this really quickly here. You know, Afi, I think that's so adorable that you're throwing that slobbery stuffed animal on me. I just can't thank you enough because it's so helpful to me. And Marie Z. Winkler says, because they have no moral compass. There are a lot of questionable things, so yeah. I don't. It's one I won't listen to or anything like that. Okay, here is a great, and Gray Hughes is someone I respect. I disagree yeah. with him uh, a lot, but I really respect him and like him. And, uh, and he is so mean, by the way. Gray is so mean. Okay, this is from his community, uh, community page on Web Sleuths. The Murder Sheets last podcast is one of the most hypocritical podcasts I've ever heard. While playing ad after ad, they explained how people should not exploit the released images they themselves have seen. They took credit for solving the leak, which isn't true. The leak was being looked at a week before the defense's 136 page document was sent out. I know that for a fact. The murder sheet said to even describe the image is unethical, even though the defense's 136 pages document does just that in great detail. It did, that's true. But not once did they mention how unethical the release of that document was, nor cite the crime scene description. The crime scene portion of the document was accurate, other than saying murderers and antlers, etc. The murder sheet has told many creators not to discuss various things, mainly so they can discuss it and pretend just do it in the right way and, and pretend they just do it in the right way. What a joke. More to come. You know what? Let me see if you put anything else on his community page real quick here. Okay. I wish we had like the theme to Jeopardy when I'm looking stuff up. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> We'd get dinged. Otherwise, yeah. I'd just do it. Yeah. I know we would. Well, I can, you know what? I can do this. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Yeah. This is really obnoxious. Uh, oh, yeah. And Shad keeps saying your shawl is at the P.O. box. I know. And I haven't, uh, I was so sick this week, Shad. I have not had a chance to go. I am planning to go either tomorrow or Thursday, and I can't wait because it's getting chilly. And my heat is turned off because my gas is turned off because there's a leak and we have to get that fixed. So I could really use it. Use so that shawl. I, use that dang shawl. I can't wait. And I bet it's beautiful. And everything Shad has sent me is just gorgeous. Okay. Oh, and supposedly the other package I sent you arrived today, so. Oh, okay. Well, so, yeah, I got that, but I didn't have any idea what it was. So, yeah, I haven't opened it yet because I got home pretty late. So, I think it's funny, so I think you'll like it. Oh, good. Well, you know me. <laughs> I laugh at anything. Okay, now, see, per no, I don't want to see the perks. I want to see his community page. Hold on. Yes, and we want to see your shawl, Trisha. Glam Dolly says, okay. can't wait to see Trisha's new shawl. We want to see it. Good deal. Okay, now, home video shorts live playlist community. Here we go. Chad, I have something I've been wanting to ask you if you can make for a long time now, and I just haven't done it. So. Okay. <laughs> That's the last. He, that was the last uh, post on his community on Grace community page about the uh, murder sheet podcast. So yeah, and I think I remember when I heard him speak before. He's done it a lot, but it was when um, I think during the time they were searching the river. Mm -hmm. I think that's when he discussed some things on a show. So I'd have to go back and look, but yeah. we could just probably email ask him. Yeah, I'll just call. I'll just yeah. Call him and better pick up because I stalk people. Yeah, you can. Well, I do. <laughs> I have to. They wish. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. It's a uh, running joke now. <laughs> I know. Oh, God. Someday we'll do a show on it. Trust me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shad is so kind. He has uh, knitted me these beautiful scarves and caps, and even this cute little sloth that went with my therapy sloth that I finally had to put up because Authram Tex Bug Nugget the first was chewing on it all the time. 
and it's just beautiful the things he has sent me and he knitted me a shawl and um you know this week I've, last week especially but i've been feeling better and so my thought was uh, i'll go tomorrow because every i want to see it too so i'll get it so thank you shane you are or shane geez shad you are so <laughs> you are yeah, so and people are asking yes shad crochets or knits i'm not sure what you'd call well, it he does make them yeah. himself yeah, it's and it's amazing. He's incredibly talented, people. Incredibly. You know, talented. one of my biggest regrets in life, my grandmother sat there and knitted and crocheted all the time. She had the thing next to her chair in the living room and mm -hmm. she made beautiful quilts and afghans and everything. And never once did I ask her how. How? Yeah. Oh, I'm so stupid because then now it's come back. And then my mother used to do it when I was a kid and I asked her and she says, I don't remember. Oh, jeez. I like, where's my mama when I need her? I know. Well, like, like everything, not everything, but some things I do, I'll start it and then I won't finish it because it just makes me crazy. I learned how to crochet and knit, but I didn't learn how to like, you know, end it. I could knit and crochet a big, long thing. <laughs> and that was it. Oh. Yeah. I wasn't real good. And it was still a time when you had girls had to take home ec and i did great in the cooking but the sewing i i did not do good at all it was um it was I'm good at sewing and embroidery oh see that's a talent when i try to sew something it looks like frankenstein's monster did it like ooh, ooh. Uh -huh. I can never, oh my god it's horrible so when i was doing my student teaching um and i was taking my class at the same time you know teachers mm -hmm have to get most of the supplies on their own so in our assignment we had to create our own games and we couldn't buy things we had to make them ourselves mm -hmm. so i amazingly i stitched together a felt book oh, and nice. in it, the pieces with you know kids can match the shapes or colors mm -hmm. and it still stands it's still there it's wow still not torn up i'm so proud of that thing See? <laughs> and that's the sign of talent you have talent to fall back on i have nothing so, and so my daughter asked me when she had her baby, can you make one for her? You know? Oh, and you should, right? Did you? Yeah. Oh, good. They're good. fun. Good. Oh, and I bet the grandkids would love it. See? I, yeah. My son needs to make a grandkid. I can't do anything for my grand dog. So Aww. he needs to make a human being. Well, I do send him treats, but you know. Yeah, I was hey, say, I've made homemade dog treats. You can do that. I, that give me the recipe. I want to try it. Okay, very good. It's easy. Uh, gambler, to... <laughs> go ahead. Keep going. Gambler's comment. Yes. Can you read that? I wanted to mention something about that. Okay. Someone said on Court TV's video, Gray Hughes made a diagram of how the murder victims were laid out and the placement of the sticks. They were alarmed he did it. You mean Court TV was alarmed that Gray Hughes did that? Well, I find that hypocritical. Well, because yeah. Because Court TV did the exact same thing and I have it. Really? They did a diagram. I was going to tell you about it. Mm -hmm. They made a diagram with, you know, outlined bodies and that showed the layout of all the sticks according to the documents. So what well, are they talking about? Yeah, that that's crazy. That's ridiculous. And, yeah, they were alarmed he did it. Why would <sighs> they be why would they be alarmed? It's a dis he's discussing something and Gray has a talent for maps and obviously laying out a crime scene. That's his talent. I yeah, don't the, the whole document came out about Odinus. So it's important to know were there Odinus symbols or not. And that's right. what was being discussed. That was in the document. And making a diagram is actually really smart so people get a clearer idea. Remember when you were reading that night? We were having a hard time understanding. Yeah, because we read it over and over because they were describing it. And it was really hard to visualize how the bodies were laid out and the things they were saying, you know? It was really yeah. hard. And Gambler says it's not what they meant. They said the commenter said they were disgusted. Oh, okay. Yeah, but Court TV did it. Okay, so Court TV didn't say um, yeah. that they were shocked they did it. When you say they, we just assumed you meant Court TV. Right, yeah. Yeah, and um, Cheetah No More says they did it, that they did do it uh, inside for when I saw it myself. So, well, again, you know, uh, here's the thing. And I tell this, anybody that has 
a situation that is a high profile situation, please don't read the comments because it'll make you crazy. You know, yeah. um, it's, it's really hard and uh, hard on the families, hard on the victims, friends, all of that. So, and I can just see people in court TV's chat room saying, I can't believe he did that. And, you know, thinking it was all bad yet the chat room they're in, they did the same thing. Yeah. So. Cause you have to go by the facts, the documents, mm -hmm. police statements, mm -hmm. things like that. You can't go by what other people are commenting or saying or right. anything at all. Cause you have to be objective and not get confirmation bias and all that. Exactly. Yeah. And here's, here's a good example <clears throat> tonight. I had not read yet that this leaker had, um, taken his own life and mm -hmm. and you were you guys are the first ones that informed me but i can't tell you how many times people have come in this chat and said something really shocking and i've repeated it and it's not true and i've learned my lesson long ago that no matter what if you make a statement but you can't point me to where that statement came from i can't use it does that make yeah, sense which is really smart remember a while back when you called me with news about a specific case and it oh, turned out that person was wrong yeah uh somebody told me that summer wells body had been found yeah and trish and called I, me and i'm like oh my god i know it and then true. Some, no, yeah. <laughs> find out it was from an old article back in march from some crazy group you know uh, just one of those wacko wackadoodle groups that made up this story how the fbi was hiding her body i mean it was so stupid yeah and i almost because i was just i i I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. So that's, and I don't mean to be, you know, so picky and obnoxious. It's just, I gotta, I gotta see it because I have done that. I have it. There's been times where like somebody, so-and-so has died and I'll go, Oh my God, so-and-so died. I can't remember who it was, but it was big. And it was, they, the, it was just a troll that had come in and, and put it in and left, you know, Hey, um, author text bug nugget, the third, fir first, did I say third, the first, uh -huh. you know, this is just, I can't tell you guys how delightful it is. Uh, I have a bowl of bleach over there. I'm just going to go stick my hands in it after this show. Ugh. He loves that thing, man. I know. Exactly. But no, we, when we're reporting and sharing information with everybody, relaying it, we yeah. have to be so careful because we don't want to give accurate inf yeah. inaccurate information. And that's why a lot of times... Somebody will ask me something and I'll say, I'm not sure. Because if I don't know or I'm not sure, I'm not going to say I am. Exactly. It's so exactly. important. Mm -hmm. On a very rare occasion, I may say, I talked to someone who said this because it's a source I truly trust. But yeah, again, but you're also letting us know that you heard it from somebody. From a source yeah, that I trust. Yeah, you're not saying this is yeah. a fact. You're saying somebody right. told me, which is a big difference. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. I hate mornings. Yeah, we do. We do really try hard to make sure our information is accurate. And believe me, I know there are times I screw up big time, and uh, I do apologize for that. But um, we do try and make sure that uh, what we put out is absolutely accurate. In fact, I was going to do a uh, thumbnail uh, apologizing because I got something really screwed up, but I can't remember what it is now. So I guess I won't apologize for it. But if you remember. I'm sorry. So I have no idea what it was. I can't remember. Just do a blanket apology for any recent screw ups. For any <laughs> screw ups from the starting of February 2020 until now, I do greatly apologize. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Hey, did you hear this about Alec Baldwin? Okay. I, I mean, it seems I like. I haven't, no. Well, here's. Here's how it looks to me, even though this this is not accurate, but this is how it looks. Uh, Baldwin charge, charges drop. Baldwin charge, charges drop. It's like ping pong back and forth. Yeah. It's not quite that bad, but here's the thing. It looks like charges are going to be refiled with involuntary manslaughter in the deadly Rust shooting. Now, remember, uh, Alec Baldwin was on the set of Rust, Rust and um, the prop master... Was it the prop master or their assistant? Um, someone handed him the gun. The was killed. Yeah. Um, somebody handed him the gun. And from what I understand, the prop master 
is supposed to look at all guns and make sure they're cold, meaning- I Oh, think that, there was, for that part, it was the armorer? Yeah, the armorer. Yeah. 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 And um, she was supposed to, supposed to look at everything, make sure everything had blanks in it. And there, there's not even supposed to be real bullets on the set anywhere. But somehow this group brought real bullets in to do uh, what they actually call it pinging, where they shoot cans off of fence posts. And um, then they take out the, the bullets, which is stupid. You shouldn't even have a live bullet on a set. So anyway, um, they handed Alec Baldwin the gun. Uh, they told him it was, I don't, I don't know if they used the word cold or what, but they told him, you know, it's has the dummy bullets in it, whatever code they is for that, that is for, for that. And um, he took the gun and he was practicing and he just shot it. I don't think he aimed at anybody. I think he just shot it, you know, and pulled the trigger because it was supposed to have, I think it was supposed to be empty because he, Oh, no, he said he didn't. That's right. He said he did not shoot it. It just went off. And uh, that's what he's been saying all along. But I don't think anybody buys that. So anyway, he pulled it out and just wherever it landed, it pointed. The gun went off and killed um, what you said, the photographer. Was that who it was? Insightful. Hello. Oh, God. Chad Daigle's got her in her porter, in in his um, portal. I'll he tell you did. what. Okay, where were you? Yeah, I don't know. It just totally took my audio away, and then it, it popped up the allow button to allow my mic again. Oh but my yeah, God. it was a cinematographer. It was a woman. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, and her dad actually is a very experienced armorer in the Hollywood uh, in the Hollywood world. But uh, I'm going to read this to you. So here's the scoop. New Mexico prosecutors reportedly plan to recharge Alec Baldwin with involuntary manslaughter in connection with the two, uh, 2021 Rust shooting that killed a cinematographer. Two sources close to the matter told NBC News that the case would be presented to the grand jury next month. Prosecutors reportedly discussed offering a plea deal to Baldwin, which would allow him to plead guilty to a misdemeanor, but the offer was rescinded this past weekend. I wonder why. Uh, in April, prosecutors dropped involuntary manslaughter charges against Baldwin. At the time, prosecutor Carrie uh, Morrissey and Jason Lewis said they needed additional time to investigate new information presented to them and that the review would not be completed before Baldwin's preliminary hearing. The charges were dismissed without prejudice, meaning they could refile, and uh, at that time, prosecutors said Baldwin would be recharged if the gun was working properly. And they determined it was, and they determined it was not malfunctioning at the time of the deadly shooting. Yeah, remember that? So he said he didn't fire it. And it appears that they feel they can prove that it was not malfunctioning. Uh, Baldwin denied pulling the trigger of the gun that fatally shot Haley Hutchins in the chest and wounded director Joel Souza in his shoulder. He claimed he was showing how he would pull the gun from the holster when the weapon fired in a mock church pew at Bonanza Creek Ranch, leading to a single bullet traveling through Souza's shoulder with the which struck Hutchins. Baldwin told officers that he believed the gun was cold. That's see, I knew cold was in there somewhere. He believed uh, the gun was cold when he was rehearsing a cross draw. However, the FBI's investigations concluded that the gun could not have been fired without someone pulling the trigger. A source told NBC the prosecutors no longer believed the prop gun was modified and new evidence suggests Baldwin was involved in unsafe practices on the set. On the day of the shooting, six camera crew members reportedly walked off the set due to issues with housing and payment. A witness said the six crew members were threatened with security if they did not leave, and they were replaced with three non-union members. Rust Amor, oh, sorry. Rust, uh, Am, how do you say this? Um, Amor, Amor, Armor, Armor, sorry, Armor, Ar yeah, Armor. Armor. Uh, Rust Armor, Hannah Gut Gutierrez, Reed is scheduled to stand trial in February on charges of involuntary manslaughter and evidence tampering. 
Reed said that the weapons supplier, Keith Ken uh, Seth Kenny, not her, was responsible for mixing live and dummy rounds. So, and they are um, going to go back to filming in April. Oh, it did actually it did return to filming in April. I don't know if it's done yet. So, there you go. There you go. So, let's just pull this out piece by piece here. Uh, Baldwin is saying he never fired it. He was practicing pulling it. And the fi FBI, I, this, a long time ago, the FBI determined that the trigger had to be pulled mm -hmm. for the gun to go off. But I guess they did some more um, investigating, probably more testing, and determined that, yeah, the gun could not misfire. So. See, I find that a moot point because, okay, on movie sets, they are, do fire guns mm -hmm. and they use blanks and things like that. And that's why they hire an armory expert mm -hmm. to be responsible for that part. He did the responsible thing. He hired an expert. He didn't do it himself. Right. There should not have been live rounds. That armorer is, I feel totally responsible for what bullet was in there because that is their job. Exactly. So, involuntary manslaughter does make sense because he involuntarily killed somebody. He didn't mean to do it. But, yeah. But, um, yeah, to me, the armory expert is the one that messed up. I mean, we all know that's how Brandon Lee died. Right. Exactly. They do use guns. They do pull triggers in movies for mm -hmm. effect. They do do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Armor. -er. It just looked funny the way it was written. So I'm just going to say uh, prop expert. There you go. Rename them. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't see how they can. I've never seen how they can hold him responsible. You know, he was he hired an expert. And she said the gun was cold. So. You know, is he lying about not firing it? Um, does he not realize he fired it? Even if he fired it, I don't see how he's responsible. The yes. armorer is responsible, you know. I don't. I don't understand it. Um, and you know, that's what the trial will be for, of course, if it goes right. to trial. So yeah, we'll see. Um, I, Kathy Lynch says, "Didn't Baldwin make uh, the victim's husband part owner of the film?" I think he did. I think he did. Candy Williams says, "I'm sorry, but I don't think an actor who is following directions should be held accountable for something the armorer was responsible for." He was the producer, though, so maybe he's responsible there. Well, that's what they're saying. He was the producer. He was the, the big one on the set. He's responsible and liable for everything, you know, kind of like the buck stops with him. Yeah. And um, so, but I don't know. I don't know. Was he lying because he was scared? Just deny, deny, deny. You know, and I have a story that says anytime a weapon is handed off, there is still a responsibility to check. But here's the deal about that. Not everybody knows what's a live round and what's not. That's right. why they hire an expert. Yeah. And Alec Baldwin is famously against guns. Right. So he would, yeah, that's a good point. But here's the thing. I think he could convince a jury that he didn't fire it. I, I do. And maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't, or maybe he did and doesn't realize it, or maybe he did and realized it and lied. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It was a horrible tragedy. It was so preventable. I mean, who lets people put live ammo in guns that are used on a set to go plunking? Oh, I said it to go pinging. It's called plunking. Sorry. Yeah. It makes a ping sound, but it's plunking. Um, Anyway, it will, uh, yeah, like uh, Glam Dolly says, it will depend on Baldwin's duties as a producer. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. It's just well, such a terrible situation. In it general. really is. It is. It's horrible. It's horrible. See there, I just see, I messed up. I said they took the guns to go pinging, and it's not pinging, it's plunking. See, you have to be. Uh, you have to have the right facts here. Just think if you all went out there thinking that plunking was pinging, it could ruin your life. Oh, I feel so responsible. 
Okay. Uh, hold on here. Let me just see something. Oh, gosh. We've gone an hour and 14 minutes. That's cool. Yeah, that went by fast. It really, really did. It really did. Um, We're I do jabbering have, a lot. So. Yeah. Just jabber, jabber, jabber. That's what we do. Okay. Now, <laughs> here's my, here it is. Let me check. I'll tell you what. Can you read chat while I take a look here? Because I know there's some people that donated uh, like late last night and today that I want to thank. So. All right. I Hate Morning says, I think it's because he's the one responsible for hiring. She wasn't experienced enough for that position because he's the producer. Oh, that could be. And she was, I mean, she was the daughter of a very experienced armorer, but, uh, and she was, uh, you know, listing herself as an armorer and she did have some experience, but very little, but still, you know, it, um, I don't know. Yeah, that's a hard one because it is. You know, you go to hire somebody and you vet them, and if she's trained and all that, and there's no strikes against her, you think right. it's okay. Exactly. And then you know now there is a strike against her, but there wasn't at the time. It possibly. Right. Okay, here we go. I want to thank Amy D. Thank you, my darling, for the PayPal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see. I want to put this up here so I can read it in just a minute. Uh, let's see, do, do, do. Amy D, again, thank you, my darling. That is so sweet of you. And uh, Kelly Marie S, thank you very, very much, my sweet. Amanda G, you have been an angel. You've donated over and over, and I really appreciate it. So thank you all for doing that. Greatly appreciate it. Now, let me read this comment. Um, Chris Renau says, you never take the word of someone else. You check for yourself. If the gun is in your hand, you are responsible. There's no such thing as a safe weapon. He had he had to have pulled the trigger. Well, Chris, I kind of agree with you. I think he did pull the trigger. But I don't know. When, when, do. when your expert that you've hired says it's a cold gun, you know, I, I just, I did. it's a tough one. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, it's a tough one. It is, and I can relay it like this. As a producer of the show, I have to vet our guests and I invite people on and I have to yes. check their stories and make sure they're accurate and say mm -hmm. I hired somebody to do their social media and yeah. they messed up, you know, then mm -hmm. it's my responsibility because I hired that person. Right. So I, in good faith or through vetting, they were reputable to me. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Exactly. Hey, I want to thank um, the Venmo donors, uh, Karen F, a, wonderful member of our show donates often i really do appreciate it and uh tammy a also and i think i said thanks to these guys uh, last night but i want to make sure uh sam s sheila b and jennifer t thank you all for your venmo i really appreciate it and let's see we got one more here oh hold on let's see no that okay where is it Where is it? No. There we go. Sherry P., thank you very, very much, my dear, for the cash app. You are a sweetheart. And Robin H., again, another wonderful supporter of this channel. Thank you very, very much. So, you try. Oh, that's true, Lori. It's true. You trust your coworkers, but sometimes it punches you in the face. Ain't that the truth? That is the absolute truth. So anyway, okay. I think that's it. I think we've covered it for tonight. Now, remember, everybody, remember, tomorrow we go an hour earlier. We go at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central, 7.30 Mountain, 6.30 Pacific. If you're in outer Mongolia, you have to figure out the time yourself. <laughs> Why are we going early? Because the wonderful Joseph Scott Morgan will be right here with us. And it just helps us schedule since he's working nonstop starting at like 4 a.m. So uh, he will be here tomorrow. So get your questions ready for him. Okay. Everybody got that? Moonlight View, Love and Coco. Thank you both. Ping, you know, I love you. I think Ping's doing a show tonight. So I'll put the link up to his channel uh, in our description. Be sure and check out Ping and be sure to, to subscribe to his channel. 
insightful one. Could not do this without you. Thank you all very, very much. So we'll see you tomorrow, an hour early, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, with Joseph Scott Morgan on Web Sleuth's YouTube Live. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.